All right, so we're thinking about dealing with these autonomous differential equations, right? So like this example where we had this population growth, right? With this dx dt is equal to two times x, right? So this is an autonomous differential equation because it's a differential equation because it has a derivative here, but it's autonomous because the uh, variable on the right-hand side is x, the variable whose derivative we're taking and not t, the derivative or the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to, okay? So this is autonomous, right? And we've seen uh, a couple ways to deal with these right now, right? So we've seen how to solve this, right? Numerically using Euler's method, right? So this generates those approximate solutions to the differential equation to kind of see what the system does over time. We've looked at it using uh, phase line diagrams, right? And we've looked at the equilibriums and stability, right? So these would say, okay, let's plot that. Um, let's plot that function, right? Two times x. Well, that's just a linear function, right? So this is f of x equals two x. Right, so then this would be x versus dx dt. And we'd say, hey, look, there's an equilibrium here at zero. And we'd say, okay, the derivative here is positive, so we're moving away from it. Um, and on the left, it's negative, so we're moving away from it in that direction too. Right, so if I finish the axis here. So population growth, really only thinking about the positive quadrant, but in any case, uh, if we had you know, negative values were allowed, then this would say, hey, that's uh, growing away from the uh, equilibrium point in the negative direction as well, right? And so we'd say, okay, that's unstable, right? And we could do that, you know, by hand, by looking for f of x star equals zero, right? That would give us two x star equals zero, or x star is zero is the equilibrium. And then the stability, we'd check the derivative f prime of x, which in this case is just two, Right, since it's a linear function, f of x is just 2x. So then f prime of x star would also be 2, which is positive, which would tell us that uh, x star equals 0 is unstable. Okay, so we've seen lots of different ways to kind of understand what's going to happen in this system, right? What's going to happen is if I start anywhere besides 0, it's unstable, it's going to grow off to infinity, okay? But it'd be nice to kind of get an explicit formula for x as a function of time, so we could say maybe how fast it's growing. And then we could ask questions like, okay, well, you know, what's its doubling time, right? Stuff like that, like we did in discrete time systems. So what we want to do, we want to find an explicit formula for x as a function of time, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to do integration, right? Just like we did with pure time differential equations, but we're going to use the technique called separation of variables, okay? It's a fancy name, um, but it's really just integration. So let's take our differential equation, dx dt is equal to two times x. And the first step is to separate the variables, okay? So we're almost thinking there's like a t to the zero here that we're gonna remove. Uh, but the idea is we wanna get x's with its derivative and everything else on the other side. So we divide by x, so we get one over x times dx dt is equal to two, okay? And now this is separated because the x's are on one side of the equation and anything that could have a t is on the right-hand side, okay? And, and some people uh, would also write it like this. Some people do this, where they move the x over here, and they move the dt to the right, like that. And then you have all the x's and all the t's on one side. Um, this just seems a little weird to me, so I do it this way, but, but this is an equivalent method, so I'll do it at the same time. The next step is then to integrate with respect to time, or take a definite indefinite integral. 
So we integrate this. 1 over x times dx dt, dt is equal to integral of 2 dt, All right? So I'm taking the indefinite integral with respect to time of both sides of the equation, okay? If you were doing it this other method, then you would integrate them, um, and the kind of differentials are already there, right? So this one's already dx, and this one's dt. So this is equivalent to, because at this step, right, now I have integral of 1 over x dx dt, dt, right? We know from doing lots of u substitution stuff that the dt's cancel here, and we're left with uh, 1 over x dx is equal to integral of 2 dt. Okay, so at this point, you know, if you if you wanted to conceptualize it uh, using this blue method on the right, well, now they're exactly the same. Okay, so it's just one extra step. But I think it makes it a little bit less confusing to me. Okay, so then we do these integrals. Right, so the left hand, the left hand integral is one over x dx. Right, so what function has derivative one over x? Well, if you remember, it's ln of x. So we do ln of absolute value of x plus a constant. Let's call it c1. And then the other integral is going to have its own integration constant. So this we integrate up with respect to time. So this was an integral with respect to x. Right, so that became natural log of absolute value of x. This one's going to be with respect to time, so this is going to give us 2t plus c2. And whenever you do this separation of variables, uh, the right-hand side integral is always going to be, or generally going to be this kind of uh, constant, very, uh, you know, just a constant sitting here, so you're always going to get like a constant times time. The left-hand integral is going to be more complicated often, um, but the right-hand one's usually pretty easy. Okay, so then we have two different constants, so let's just combine them as one, right, because the value of the constant doesn't matter until we kind of solve the equation anyways, right? Once we plug in that initial condition, we're going to solve for that constant. So we can just combine these c's into, let's call it constant 3, okay? So here I'm just combining the constants of integration, okay, because they're completely arbitrary and um, it'll make our life easier um, when we're trying to solve for that constant integration. Okay. Um, so then the next step is to kind of uh, get x alone, right? We want to get x as a function of time. Right now it's sitting inside this log. So here, since we're doing for population growth, we can get rid of these absolute value signs because x is always greater than or equal to zero, right? Negative population doesn't make sense, so we can drop the uh, absolute value signs, okay? So then this just becomes natural log of x is equal to 2t plus constant three, okay? And then to get rid of the natural log, right, we take the exponential of both sides, right? So we do e to the natural log of x, is equal to e to the 2t plus c3. e to the natural log of x just gives us x, and this we can call, uh, we can call this constant k, or, or let's call it c, will be e to the c3, right? So we're gonna redefine the constant again, just to make our lives easier. Right, so if we let this constant of integration be exponential to the c3, Right, this is e to the 2t times e to the c3, right, by exponential rules. So then that just becomes a new constant, right? So we get our final answer is a constant times exponential of 2t. Okay, so then this is, you know, this is our like function of time. So this is our explicit formula for x of t. Right? x as a function of time is some constant times e to the 2t. Right? And this is what we'd expect because uh, when we designed this problem, we were saying this is some sort of population growth system where it's always doubling. right? And so um, this here would kind of be the equivalent solution that you get out of a discrete time system. Okay? So some constant times an exponential. And then if you're you know paying attention here, you'll remember that the constant that sits out in front is gonna be that initial population, right? So if we include 
an initial condition that'll define our C, right, to find C. Okay, so if our X at time zero was say a thousand, then that means that X at time zero is C E to the zero is equal to a thousand, E to the zero is one, right? C times one equals a thousand, tells us that C equals a thousand. Okay, and so for these simple population growth uh, problems, the constant sitting out in front there is always gonna be the initial condition. But for more complicated differential equations, that constant in integration you'll probably have to solve for in terms of the initial condition, but it won't exactly be the initial condition. Okay, so then this gives us our final answer, right? Our final formula, x of t is 1000 e to the 2t, right? And so we can kind of, you know, see what happens here, right? We're starting away from uh, the equilibrium point, right? So we're starting, we go back to our picture here, right, our phase line diagram, we're starting over here at a thousand, right? This is our starting point. So what happens? Well, we're gonna flow away from it, right? We're gonna go away from zero, we're just gonna increase exponentially to the right. If we look at our solution, 1000 e to the 2t, right? As, you know, as t goes up, right, as that time variable continues on forward through time, this is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So it's kind of consistent with the a phase line diagram we had here. Okay. Exponential growth is consistent with the phase line diagram. Right? On the other hand, you know, in this phase line diagram, the only thing that doesn't grow is if we start exactly at that equilibrium point, right? If we start exactly at uh, x equals zero, then we said that's an equilibrium point, right? So let's check that that makes sense in our solution, right? Uh, equilibrium at x star equals zero. So what does that mean? It means if we start there, we should stay there for all time, right? So if we do initial condition x of zero equals zero now, into our solution, x of t equals c to the two, c e to the two t, right? So if I plug in this initial condition, c e to the zero equals zero, that tells me c times one is zero or c equals zero. And now if c is zero, right? If my constant is zero, then my function is just zero e to the two t, which is just zero for all time, right? So that is indeed uh, an equilibrium point for the system, okay? If we change this uh, growth rate, right? If we look at a different differential equation, different population growth, where maybe this is some sort of dying population, right? Dx dt, oops, is equal to, let's say minus two x, okay? If we do the same process, um, let's check the phase line diagram first, right? So we know what to expect. The phase line diagram, if we plot minus 2x, it's a straight line like this. This is minus 2x, x versus dx dt. So then the equilibrium is still at zero. But now the phase line diagram says this is positive on the right, so it increases towards zero. On the left, it's negative, so it decreases towards zero. So it means that the equilibrium at zero is stable. Right? And we could check using uh, the kind of calculus version of stability, but the phase line diagram will give us the same information. So we expect decay to zero as kind of what the solution should look like. So let's try solving, right? So let's solve. So we do uh, dx dt equals minus two x. Let's separate and integrate. So we get one over x dx dt is equal to minus two integrate both sides with respect to time, one over x dx dt, dt equals integral of minus two dt, okay? This again is gonna give us natural log of x plus a constant is equal to minus two t plus a different constant, which we can combine, right? x is population, 
So x is always positive, means we can drop the absolute value signs, right? This gives us minus 2t plus a different constant. Let's uh, put both sides, exponentiate both sides, right? So we get e to the ln x is equal to e to the minus 2t plus c3. So then this becomes x. And this, I'm going to combine the e to the c3 as its own constant now. So that's going to be a constant times e to the minus 2t. OK, let's just call this x of t. So it's crystal clear we're talking about x as a function of time. OK, and so the only difference between uh, this solution and the previous solution is the you know number or the rate that's sitting inside that exponential, right? Because it's the uh, rate consistent with this differential equation. Right? All we did was change that rate constant. Okay, so then in this case, right, let's say I start with some uh, same initial condition, right? So let's use the initial condition x of zero is a thousand again, right? So we're starting with some big population. Plug that in, we get x of zero equals c e to the zero equals a thousand. So that means that c is a thousand again, right? So then our solution is x of t equals one thousand e to the minus 2t, okay? But what happens to this, right? As t goes up and up and up, this exponential is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's gonna to go to zero, right? So now this is exponential decay, which is consistent with the prediction that we had here, which was we expected our solutions to decay to zero because the zero equilibrium was stable, right? And there's no equilibriums anywhere else, so the solutions have to flow towards that stable equilibrium state. Okay, which is consistent with uh, this here. Okay, and if we plugged in zero as our initial ignition, we'd stay at zero. Uh, but that's kind of not, not as interesting in this case because all solutions are decaying to zero. Okay, cool. So in the next video, I'll do a, a different example, maybe a more complicated system, uh, but we'll end this one here.